one. I'm so glad to be here with all of you. So great to be up here. I have a question for you. Can you think of a time in your life when you saw God work in a very personal way? Through the years, many things really have showed me that our God is a personal God. When I saw how he woke me up in the morning, just as I asked him to when I was six, when I saw how God wrought a revival in my friends and my life when I was 12, when I saw how my heart burned within me as I communed with God in nature, and how he works with and through me canvassing, and when I saw how God has allowed certain struggles, temptations, and trials in my life to show me my need of him, and he, I, he's shown me how those things can also help me to reach out to other people that are going through the same thing. When I see all these things, I am convinced that our God is a God that cares deeply for every person on this planet. He is our personal God. So before we go on, let's have a quick word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you so much for this beautiful day. Lord, I thank you that you are a personal God. And Lord, I just pray you'd be with us this evening, that you would speak through me, and Lord, that this would not just be another week of prayer, but Lord, that this night, that we would truly surrender our lives completely over to you. And Lord, I pray that we would see you in new ways that we haven't seen you before. And Lord, we thank you so much for hearing this prayer and what you will do tonight. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'd like to like you all to turn your Bibles to 2 Kings 4, 8 through 10. 2 Kings 4, 8 through 10. So we've been talking about the life of Elijah, Elisha. And today we are going to be focusing on the Shunammite woman. And there's so many beautiful lessons we can learn from this story. So starting in verse 8, it says, And it fell on a day that Elisha passed to Shunam, where was a great woman. She was a great woman. She was influential. She was probably rich too. And going on, it says, And she constrained him to eat bread. And so it was that as oft as he passed by, he turned in thither to eat bread. And she said unto her husband, Behold now, I perceive that this is an holy man of God, which passeth by us continually. Let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall, and let us set for him there a bed, and a table, and a stool, and a candlestick. And it shall be, when he cometh to us, that he shall turn in thither. So here we see that Elisha was passing by this lady's house. And she, she didn't just let him pass by. She did something about it. So my first point is Jesus is a gracious guest, just eagerly waiting for an invitation into our lives. There are many people that could have invited Elisha into their homes for a meal or for the night. Maybe the others were too busy with their daily round of duties or thought it was too much work to make a room for Elisha in their homes. But this great woman, she made the move. Just as Elisha passed through Shunem, Jesus is passing through Washita Hills every morning. He's wondering who will invite him in to be an abiding presence. Are we too busy with our cares and our burdens that we do not notice him pass by? Interesting. <laughs> All right. 
Again, our first point, Jesus is a gracious guest, just eagerly waiting for an invitation into our lives. So just as Elijah passed through Shunem, Jesus is passing through Washa the Hills every morning. Are we too busy with our cares and burdens that we do not notice him pass by? Or do we invite him just for a little meal here and there? We may have accepted Jesus into our lives yesterday or the day before, but what about today? What about right now? If God was first in our lives, we would not value sleep over devotion. If God was first in our lives, we would not go straight to our phones to look on social media during every free moment. If God was first in our lives, we would not keep focusing on ourselves and our issues. If God was first in our lives, we would not be jealous of other people and compare ourselves with them. If God was first in our lives, we would not walk by a hurting friend without giving them a word of encouragement and cheer. If God was first in our lives, we would glorify him in all our trials. If God was first in our lives, we would trust him completely with our lives and not worry about the future. Is God first in your life? Ask yourself that. Is God first in your life? I can honestly say God has not always been first in my life. There has been times I have valued sleep over my devotions, wasted time with even good things, have failed to give a friend a word of encouragement because I was so focused on myself, and have compared myself with others. But God is still there, longing to come inside my heart and yours so patient and faithful to us even when we are unfaithful. My second point is, Jesus satisfies us as we join him in ministering to others. Are we too focused on, our own, on ourselves and our own issues that we miss opportunities to minister to all those around us? She did above and beyond in regards to kindness. Despite her troubles, despite her busyness in life, she did above and beyond in being kind and welcoming to others. There's this verse in Proverbs 12, 25, and it says, Heaviness in the heart of man maketh it stoop, but a good word maketh it glad. And I've seen that many times. You know, kind words can go a long ways. Sometimes, like, people have said kind things to me, and I thought about it for a long time. I didn't forget it like that at all. In all our associations, it should be remembered that in the experience of others, there are chapters sealed from mortal sight. On the pages of memory are sad histories that are sacredly guarded from curious eyes. There stand registered long, hard battles with trying circumstances, perhaps troubles in the home life, that day by day weaken courage, confidence, and faith. Those who are fighting the battle of life at great odds may be strengthened and encouraged by little attentions that cost only a loving effort. To such the strong, helpful grasp of the hand by a true friend is worth more than gold or silver. Words of kindness are as welcome as the smile of angels. This makes me think of how you all encouraged me the other day when I lost my cat. And I really appreciated that. Little kind words can mean so much. So I've heard many kind words like this at OH, but I believe that we need some more of this amongst ourselves. It's not like we can muster kindness up, but God gives it to us when we are fully surrendered. What if all that came out of our mouths was encouraging and uplifting to others, just as Jesus' words were. Wouldn't that be beautiful? By experience, I know what it's like to be struggling with an all-encompassing, overwhelming trial or temptation. I know that I am not the only one who goes through such things. We all have our own struggles and issues, but we must remember to support each other and lift each other up 
through our kind words and actions, no matter what. Also, side note, be careful even in joking. There's usually a little truth in every joke. These jokes can be very hurtful to a person, even if we think our words don't have any negative impact. We need to think before we speak and ask ourselves, what would Jesus say in this situation? This is something the Lord has been trying to teach me. A lot of times we are so engulfed with the busyness of life, but God wants for us to stop focusing on ourselves and instead reach out and help our fellow classmates around us. When we give kindness to others, when we share kindness with others, it will be returned. As we encourage others and treat them as Jesus would, our hearts will be encouraged also. Isn't that beautiful? Because many times when I go out there, when I serve others, you know, my heart is encouraged. And when I stop focusing on myself, that's where I find the greatest joy. So I'm going to tell you a story of this one Sabbath. This is when I was in high school. And you know how you guys go on a lot of hikes and stuff, right? So I, I love hikes. I, lo I love outdoorsy stuff. So I, I was happy. Well, normally I was happy. But this day, I was not. Because I was like struggling with some stuff, and I was tired, and I was like, I really don't want to go on this hike. But I had to go, because in Academy, you know, there's things you have to go to. <laughs> and it's good. I'm glad. Um, so I was like, Lord, I really don't want to go, but can you please make this a good experience for me? Can you please help me to be able to minister to someone there? And stop focusing on myself. Because really, when we focus on ourselves, it really gets us nowhere. And so I just prayed. I was like, Lord, please help me to be able to minister to someone. Stop focusing on myself. And so I went on the hike, because I had to go on the hike. And you know what? That was one of my most memorable hikes I've ever had. Because on that hike, I was able to talk to someone I actually hadn't talked to much before. And we were able to have a wonderful, deep conversation about God and what he's been doing in our lives. And it was just amazing to see how God directly answered my prayer. And he surprised me in a way I never would have imagined. So God is such a powerful, personal God that loves to surprise us. Now let's go to 2 Kings 4, 11 through 27. 2 Kings 4, 11 through 27. And it says, And it fell on a day that he came thither, and he turned into the chamber and lay there. And he said to Gehazi, his servant, Call the Shunammite. And when he had called her, she stood before him. And he said unto, and he said unto him, Say now to her, Behold, thou hast been careful for us with all this care. What is to be done for thee? What is thou be spoken for to the king or to the captain of the host? And she answered, I dwell among mine own people. She was content where she was at. She's like, I dwell among my own people. And he said, What then is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, Verily she hath no child, and her husband is old. And he said, Call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the door. And he said, About this season, according to the time of life, thou shalt embrace a son. And she said, Nay, my lord, thou man of God, do not lie unto thine handmaid. And the woman conceived and bare a son at that season, that Elisha had said unto her, according to the time of life. And when the child was grown, it fell on a day that he went out to his father to the reapers. And he said unto his father, My head, my head. And he said to a lad, Carry him to his mother. And when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon, and then he died. Can you imagine your son dying in your arms? And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God and shut the door upon him and went out. And she called and to her husband, and said, Send me, I pray thee, one of the young men and one of the asses, that I may run to the man of God and come again. And he said, Wherefore wilt thou go to him today? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. And she said, It shall be well. 
You hear that? It shall be well. Then she saddled an ass and said to her servant, Drive and go forward. Slack not thy riding for me, except I bid thee. So she went and came unto the man of God, to Mount Carmel. And it came to pass, when the man of God saw her afar off, that he said to Gehazi his servant, Behold, yonder is that Shunammite. Run now, I pray thee, to meet her, and say unto her, Is it well with thee? Is it well with thy husband? Is it well with a child? And she answered, It is well. Was it well? Can you imagine? And when she came to the man of God to the hill, she caught him by the feet. But Gehazi came near to thrust her away. And the man of God said, Let her alone, for her soul is vexed within her. And the Lord hath hid it from me, and hath not told me. So my point number three is Jesus is our go-to one for healing and help. Is God truly our best friend that we go to for everything? Do we glorify God through our trials? Or do we bring dishonor to his name by our distrustful words and actions? You know, after going through an intense trial such as the Shunammite woman, don't stay in the room mourning. Get up and go to Jesus immediately, just like the woman went straight to Elisha. I can't, I can almost imagine her, you know, rushing on this donkey, like galloping, and like the, the dust is coming up behind her, and her hair is just like flowing in the breeze, and she's on a mission. She is, she's going to go see Elijah, Elisha. She didn't stop by the side of the road and tell her friends and her family about her son that just died so that she could get sympathy. She was on a specific mission to find Jesus. Many times we tend to go and tell our friends or family our troubles instead of going first to God. A lot of times we get all worked up about things when it really does not no good. Tell him all your trials and he will comfort you and give you a solution. In the moment of deepest trial, sometimes it's hard to remember this. But just trust. It shall be well. That's what she said. It shall be well. This too shall pass. If there, was any, if there was any time to ask God why, it would be in that moment. Yes, she was going through a lot, but she had hope and contentment that God was still in control. When we are with Jesus through our trials, the trials seem to shrink as we see how powerful and wonderful he is. I wish you could read along with me, but I guess not. It's okay. When trouble comes, instead of getting out of patience, instead of fretting and worrying, go to the Lord and tell him all about it. Do not go to human friends, for they have all the burdens they can bear. Do not think that by placing your burdens on others, you can find relief. Come right to the burden bearer and tell him about them. Believe that he is able and willing to make the circumstances of your case, to meet the circumstances of your case. When in contrition, you come to the foot of the cross, when you have faith in the merits of a crucified and risen Savior, you will receive power through him. As you cast your helpless soul upon him, he gives you peace and joy and strength and courage. Then you are able to tell someone else how precious Christ is to you. You can say, I sought him and found him precious to my soul. Isn't that beautiful? I sought him and found him precious to my soul. We are to be constantly reaching upward to God. This is another quote. Think much and talk little of ourselves, but talk of Jesus. Dwell upon his matchless charms. Talk not of our trials. Brood not over our privations, but remember Jesus, the Son of God. John 10.10. 10. Let's turn our Bibles to John 10.10. 10. John 10.10. 10. Everyone have their Bibles? You can say amen when you get there. All right, and it says, 
The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. So God has come to give us life. He's a personal God that wants to put life into us. So we are in a great controversy between good and evil. A time may come in all our lives when Satan will attempt to steal something that God has decided to bless us with. Just like Satan was trying to take away the Shunammite woman's son. But this is the time to stand on God's word against the devil. The Holy Spirit within you will strengthen you to do this once you have set your heart to stand on God's word. So it is possible in those times when the devil tries to get at us, we can just say, you know what? God's on our side. I don't have to focus on the devil. I don't have to focus on myself. I'm going to focus on God's power. So I'm going to tell you another story. This is a canvassing experience, and I was canvassing. Uh, I love canvassing, by the way. And I was canvassing in a, in a rich neighborhood, a very rich neighborhood. And usually, you know, I'm pretty cool with that. And I like canvassing rich neighborhoods, but this rich neighborhood was a little different. So I knocked in the first house, right? And they were plain rude. Knocked in the second door, they were rude. Then I knocked in the third door, I don't think anyone was there. Then I knocked on the next door, and they were rude. And then I knocked knocked on the next door, and they were also rude. And so pretty much it went on like that for like door after door after door. And there was a lot of doors on that street. (laughs) (laughs) And I wasn't used to that because like, I don't know, that hadn't happened for a little while. And so I was like, okay, Lord. So there's two different outlooks I could have. I could be like, you know, why is this happening to me? Um... I'm doing all that I can. I should just give up. Like, I'm doing no good here. I could, I could think of it that way. Or I could think of it that, you know, Satan is trying to discourage me right now. And by God's grace, I'm not going to let him discourage me. I'm going to look to Jesus, and I'm going to do the best I can. And by God's grace, he's going to work this out, out for good. And there's going to be a divine appointment waiting. And so, you know, sometimes I have picked the first route. Sometimes I have gotten discouraged, but this time, by God's grace, I picked to trust God and be like, you know what? God's got a plan. And I'm like, something good is coming. And so as I went, I got so excited. I'm like, something good is coming. That was like one of my most like joyful days canvassing because I was like, whoa, like something amazing is about to come. And by God's grace, there was an amazing divine appointment that God worked out for me. And you know, if I would have thought in the other mindset, like, why is this happening why am I out here doing this when it doesn't seem like there's any fruit? Then I wouldn't have been ready for that divine appointment. And so, you know, when those times come in our lives, when trials come, trust God that he has a plan and he's working in you and that he will finish the work that he has started in you. So also I want to read 2 Kings 4, 28 through 30. 2 Kings 4, 28 through 30. And it says, Then she said, Did I desire a son of my Lord? Did I not say, Do not deceive me? Then he said to Gehazi, Gird up thy loins, and take my staff in thine hand, and go thy way. If thou meet any man, salute him not. And if any salute thee, answer him not again, and lay my staff upon the face of the child. And the mother of the child said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And he arose, and he followed her. So do we push past our lukewarm attitude and plead with the king of the universe to answer our humble prayers? Our prayers, this is a quote as well, our prayers are to be as earnest and persistent as was the petition of the needy friend who asked for the loaves at midnight. The more earnestly and steadfastly we ask, the closer will be our spiritual union with Christ. 
we shall receive increased blessings because we have increased faith. That's Christ's Object Lessons 146, paragraph 1. And this quote, listen carefully, because this quote is good. Deal truly with your own soul. Be as earnest, as persistent as you would be if your mortal life were at stake. You hear that? Be as earnest, as persistent as you would be if your mortal life were at stake. This is a matter to be settled between God and your own soul, settled for eternity. A supposed hope and nothing more will prove your ruin. It's a solemn thought. In these last days, I think our greatest need is the Holy Spirit, who gives us motivation and persistence in our spiritual walk. We are so lazy. So lazy. I'm speaking of myself, and I know I'm not the only one here that is sometimes lazy in my spiritual walk. Sometimes we get into this attitude that we don't really mind that we are doing the wrong thing. And that's dangerous. That's dangerous. But God rewards persistence. If we are not persistent in our Christian walks, we will not be saved. That's the bottom line. The Christian walk is not a walk in a park, which I have realized through the years. But friends, it is so worth the effort. So worth the effort. Our society has shaped our laziness today. We don't like to use our brains because we have calculators and we have Google. We can look up anything. It's at our fingertips, at least for the college student. We have washing machines, we have dishwashers, microwaves, and car washes to do all the work for us. We many times give up easily with our exercise plans. We get distracted and waste our time and we give in so easily to the devil's traps. We know it's wrong, but we just don't care sometimes. Am I right? I've been noticing this trend in my generation as well as just in the world in general. So is there a solution for us? Is there? Praise the Lord, there is a solution for each one of us. Pray for God to give you motivation in your Christian walk. I challenge you to pray daily for the Holy Spirit in your lives. Friends, persevere, persevere, persevere into the end because your mort mortal life is at stake. My mortal life is at stake. Let's read 2 Kings 4, 31 through 37. We're nearing the close. Second Kings four thirty one through thirty seven. And it says And Gehazi passed on before them and laid the staff upon the face of the child, but there was neither voice nor hearing. Wherefore he went again to meet him and told him, saying, The child is not awaked. And when Elisha was come into the house, behold, the child was dead and laid upon his bed. He went in, therefore, and shut the door upon them twain, and prayed unto the Lord. And he went up and lay upon the child, and put his mouth upon his mouth, and his eyes upon his eyes, and his hands upon his hands. And he stretched forth, he stretched himself upon the child, and the flesh of the child waxed warm. Then he returned and walked in the house, to and fro, and went up and stretched himself upon him. And the child sneezed seven times, and the child opened his eyes. And he called Gehazi and said, Call the Shunammite. So he called her, and when she was come in unto him, he said, Take up thy son. Then she went in and fell at his feet and bowed herself to the ground and took up her son and went out. So I want to repeat that last verse and listen carefully. She went in and fell at his feet and bowed herself to the ground, and then she took up her son and went out. So do you notice she didn't run to her son, give him a huge hug, and then thank Elisha? So 
So point number five is Jesus is worthy of our continual worship as we realize his continual faithfulness. So do we often forget the many times that God answers our prayers and fail to praise him for his continual faithfulness? There's many times I've prayed for things over and over, and God's answered my prayer. But then I forget that I prayed for it, and I don't thank him as I should. But we must thank him because he is always so faithful. And there's this quote that I found recently that's really stood out to me. It says, if we keep the Lord ever before us, allowing our hearts to go out in thanksgiving and praise to him, we shall have a continual freshness in our religious life. A continual freshness. Sounds like some of you guys heard that quote before. And do you guys want continual freshness in your spiritual life? I mean, that's what I want. And I know there's many people here that also would like that. When we see how God works everything out for good, even though at one time the future seemed bleak, we, all we can do is fall at his feet and worship him. So in closing, Jesus is eager and ready to be our abiding, gracious guest. He's longing to satisfy and fulfill us as we cooperate in ministry to others. He is the go-to one for help and healing. He is worthy of our worship for his continual faithfulness. So my appeal tonight is, do you long to experience the powerful, personal presence of Jesus in your life today? Our God is a personal God, and he loves each of us so much. And I know he has a plan for each one of you here and for me. And I pray that if this is your desire, that you would raise your hand with me right now. Praise the Lord. And we're going to end with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you so much for this day you've given us. Thank you for speaking through me. And Lord, I just pray that you would become a greater part of our lives, that you give us a fresh new experience with you today and right now. Lord, I pray that we would be persistent in our Christian walk, that we would not give up, that we would keep pushing to draw closer to you. And Lord, you want to draw close to us. We are passing by every morning every moment, and Lord, I pray that we would choose you every moment of the day. And Lord, I pray that tonight, as we do our different duties, that you just be with us, that you would help us to focus on you, not on ourselves, not on others, but only on you. Lord, we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen.